Hello everyone. Today we are joined by Michael Shu. Michael works with empaths and highly sensitive people as an intergenerational trauma healer of anxiety, anger, and depression by finding out whose movie are you in. He is an author and host of the Heal from the Ground Up podcast and YouTube channel. Welcome, Michael. Thank you for having me. Yeah, my pleasure. So, tell us a little bit about、um, this movement of whose movie are you in. So I'll share with a personal story. So、sure. um, I have a seven-month-old right now, and he was born in the Czech Republic because my wife has access to free healthcare there. And ten days before he was born, all the way until he was two months old, because that's、uh, right before the time we came back to the U.S. During that whole time, I had terrible insomnia. I would sleep for three or four hours a day, and then be woken up because either I had to change a diaper. Or go to the restroom, and immediately I feared I wouldn't be able to go back to sleep, and this kept on happening for two months. It was like my nightmare, and it felt like my worst fear was I was I'm gonna die. It maybe not be logical, but when you're speaking from the anxiety, the anger, the depression, it's always thinking about a worst fear to prevent it. And my worst fear was death. And when I came home, my parents had picked us up at the airport, and we all had dinner together that same night. And、uh, we were all sharing stories on how me and my wife raised our newborn, and how my parents raised me as a newborn. And I found out for the first time ever that my mother never took care of me throughout the night, because she was scared if I were to wake her up, she wouldn't be able to go back to sleep. And she's extremely and obsessively fearful of death, but she fixates on health and safety to avoid that. So her house is like a fortress. It's, it's in a nice neighborhood. But the windows are barred up. There's an alarm system, a surveillance system, and she put on her bedroom door. There's a door lock, chain lock, and she puts a chair against the door handle. Wow. Yeah, and it's up. It's obsessive. Right now, I'm you know currently in the transition and living with in my parents' addition.、Uh, and if you can see the video,、uh, like there's like blinds here, and then when the sun goes down, she has to have the blinds. Closed, and even though all, we have a big wall,、uh, so nobody can really see, and she's worried that somebody can see us and see me, and 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 harm me. If I when I go to bed, I'm allowed to open the window one inch. Wow.、Um, and she puts a like a window stopper. Of course, I unscrew it before I go to. <laughs> 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 But. If I open it four inches and she finds out, like, oh my God, somebody can stick their whole arm inside. And so, what I what I'm relaying back to the original story is that, as a newborn, I felt and internalized her pain and trauma, and fear, and repeated that same pain and trauma. I I, re, I mean I I felt it and internalized it as a newborn. And repeated that same pain and trauma 39 years later, when I had my own newborn. And when I heard that, I was able to have this huge release, because I was in my mother's movie. Now, why does she fear death? Because there's an intergenerational phenomenon of abandonment. My grandmother, when she was five years old,、um, her father was a high-ranking general in China. He he divorced his wife. Wanted somebody prettier and better educated, and so my grandma's mother had to live a life of extreme poverty, severed from her first child, and so that was the first case of abandonment. And my grandmother, when、uh, she so my grand my grandmother's father remarried, and the stepmother did not want to be the stepmother, did not want to be known as a second wife, so she didn't want my grandmother a part of the family. So she was raised by her grandparents, but this is World War Two, communism, Japanese invasion. Death, a world of death, violence, and murder. So my grandmother, for example, communists invaded her home, and she was hiding in the barn. And she saw, as a teenager, she saw all her family members lined up in the line and killed execution style. So she had to flee for safety to her father's new home. When she came, his first reaction was disappointment because he knew his second wife would be angry. So with her life on the line, she was not worth protecting. And she's 93 years old right now, 
And for the longest time, she'll sit with her body during family lunches or dinners. She'll sit with her body facing outwardly because subconsciously she feels like she's not part of the family. So my mom internalizes, I internalize this. Like if I don't sleep, I'll die and I'll cease to um, exist. So that's my personal story. And I see that I'm living in my mother's movie. There's a lot of movies that mm -hmm. we can be living in, but that's just one um, example. Yeah, and I, and I can I, totally relate to that too. I mean, I know like when my daughter was born, um, same kind of feeling that you had. It's like, oh my God, am I ever going to get to sleep? Um, <laughs> you know, she was up constantly through the night and just thinking like, okay, well, what's going to happen if I go to sleep and I, maybe she rolls over and she can't breathe, you know, what's going to happen then? And what, you know, I got to constantly check on her. Like every 20 minutes is like getting up, checking, getting up, checking, making sure that she's safe. And, you know, as a new parent, you know, we, we don't really know what to expect. And just living on that um, plane of being so exhausted and so tired all the time of waking up to make sure our children are safe. Um, it's something that I think a lot of people can relate to. So yeah. I'm glad you're talking about this. There's a mantra I like to share that really helps uh, us to center ourselves. It's the very first step. And the mantra goes, problems bring up feelings in us that existed before the problem ever happened. Mm, I like that. So this is about the process that I use to, is that I, to get to the root of all the negative emotions, feelings, and problems. Is I call it the emotional strength FIST process. And F stands for feeling, as in feeling is healing. We're normally thinking, thinking, and overthinking and constantly doing. And so this is about the thinking mind, that mantra problems bring up feelings in us that existed before the problem ever happened. That's the thinking mind. The thinking mind tells us it is a certain problem causing us a certain negative emotion and negative feeling. And it tells us if you fix the problem, you will fix the feeling. But the reality is that the feeling preceded the problem. So even mm -hmm. if we fix the problem, the core issue, the core negative feeling still exists and it is going to say something negative about us but these feelings are weeds they're not true about who we really are we just need to uncover it identify it so it doesn't subconsciously and secretly control how we feel and think right yeah so i saw on one of your posts um that you said that all anxiety depression and anger are symptoms of the intergenerational trauma. Can you go a little bit deeper into that for the people who may not be familiar with this kind of concept? Okay. So anxiety, anger, and depression, the way I f kind of frame it is that they are emotional coping mechanisms to help us avoid feeling some type of pain. Anxiety is how we run away from our pain. Anger is how we protect our pain and depression is how we numb our pain. But we're all trying to avoid. That's why we don't like to feel. That's why we're constantly thinking and doing because we associate feeling with feeling pain. But the pain is just an emotional wound. So even if we feel it, I say feeling is healing because it connects you to love. You're already, if you feel the emotional wound, you begin the healing process by giving it the medicine of love in order to heal. But very importantly, we don't want to feel the pain because it's saying something negative about us. But if we avoid our feeling, we are saying that it's true. We would not avoid something unless it's real. If a, this seems like a silly question, but if a bear was running after you, would you run? I would. Your, yeah. <laughs> so the question is, when you feel the uncomfortable feeling, do you run by constantly thinking and constantly doing? And if we avoid it, it could be saying that we are a failure, that we are worthless, we're alone, and we don't matter or we're powerless. And if we avoid it, cause that's our, we don't like feeling it, but if we avoid it, then we're saying it's true. So I talk about cutting the head off the snake. We have to identify the feeling mm -hmm. and the process that I use to identify that feeling is called the P E W F poof process. So first that you identify your emotion, for example, like P is problem E is emotion. My problem is insomnia. When I don't get good sleep, it really brings up anxiety, which is the emotion. W, worst fear. Stretch the problem to your worst fear, worst case scenario. We don't want to go there, okay? 
but we this is helps us identify the weed. My worst fear is death. The F is the feeling about the self, and you want to think about if your worst fear came true, how would that make you feel about who you are? And I call it the FWP: failure, worthless, and powerless. Those are the three common core feelings: failure or failing others, worthless. It could be, I'm alone. I don't matter. People don't care about me. I'm abandoned. And powerless is powerless as a fixer. You feel immensely responsible for others. Feel the weight of the world on your shoulders, or powerless because you just need to be in control at the time. Okay,、mm. and that's just identify the feeling, cut the head off the snake, because the ego, the thinking mind, that's the whole mechanism of the ego. P E W F. The thinking mind says fixate on the problem, which is the P. Fixate on the E, which is the emotion, anxiety, anger. That's the one causing all my pain. Fixate on the worst fear in order to prevent it, because if you fixate on this. And prevent the worst fear, then you will avoid feeling that core negative feeling, failure, worthless, or powerless. But you got to cut the head off the snake. You got to face the feeling, because if we avoid it, we're only saying that it's true. And I want to give another example because not just my、mm-hmm. example. I did a、uh, released a, a YouTube episode and a podcast episode on it. It's called the trauma of a family murder. But this is、uh, her name is Tia, and this was not. This is not what was initially discussed at all. She was she had a steady job. She transitioned into an entrepreneur, and she was feeling extremely lost, worried that she's gonna fail. But the real issue is not failure. It's not in, not being able to be in control, because、mm-hmm. as an entrepreneur, nothing is set in stone. So, for example, she has a daughter who she has enough clothes for her to wear a different outfit for three weeks in a row. Wow. And, but her daughter will wear one outfit Monday, and even if it's a little bit dirty, she's staying a little bit. She'll wear the same outfit Wednesday, and Tia will completely lose it.、Hmm. And, and she's always having arguments with her daughter. And she has she's a single mother, and her boyfriend, if he doesn't listen intently to her, he may be distracted. It's not intentional. She will also lose it because she doesn't feel like she's in control. Now, where does this pain of feeling powerless come from? When Tia was one years old, her mother's sister was murdered by her husband, who was a serial killer, and strangled her to death.、Oh、so the so the pain of powerlessness was the pain, the trauma of the whole family that their loved one would be murdered by her very own husband, who was a serial killer. And so, she's in the movie of her past family members. When her daughter is wearing the same outfit, when her、uh, boyfriend is not listening intently, so it seems like a minor issue. It's big deal. It's not a big deal. And also, the entrepreneur she thinks failure, failure, failure. That's the surface. It's really that she feels powerless, and that is the barrier to her success. And that's all in her. She's in the movie of her past family members. Wow. So, what advice would you kind of give to people? Who may be feeling the fear, especially now that、um, COVID nineteen has taken on a global scale.、Um, people are now at home.、Um, it's a completely w- new way of living, but people are still maybe afraid to go out and see people、um, once the ban gets lifted,、um, and people are afraid to do these things. How can people in their homes start to really dissect this and get down to the core of it? Got it. Got it. Kind of umbrella. Something I've heard. Recently, an interview with Robert Kiyosaki. He's the author of the Rich Dad Poor Dad,、mm-hmm. and he just said in he said in an interview about COVID nineteen. He said, "You are a caterpillar. COVID nineteen is your cocoon, and it's your it's up to you to transform into a butterfly."、Mm, I like that. It's not about minimizing what's going on because it it has hit me hard tremendously financially. You know, my wife. Two weeks before we bought to buy a house, she puts all the money without me knowing into Tesla stock. COVID nineteen hits; half of our savings is lost. Oh no! It takes a huge, a huge turmoil. She doesn't want living in 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 the with my parents, and she, there's a lot of emotion around that. And then it's like we had hours and hours of relationship relationship sessions. Like I don't want to tell. It's like it was is I went. I've seen the dark side. <laughs> You know, 
So like, but I'm getting, I'm getting better through it all. So we have to think about this stuff. Problems bring up feelings in us that existed before the problem ever happened. It's not minimizing what's going on. For example, my wife has a terrible concept of time. On our second date, she was 40 minutes late. Should she be more on time? Yes. But it made me angry. It made me angry because it made me feel like I don't matter. But that was a feeling that I had before I met her. So I want people to think about, just use the process, F-I-S-T. Feeling is healing. We're always thinking, thinking and overthink. Got to create a foundation of heal for all uh, levels of healing and awareness to be possible. That's feeling. Don't even like figure it out. Just go into your body, find the tension, the anxiety, the anger, whatever is in your body, your throat, your heart, your stomach, and just feel it. Feeling is healing. Establish the foundation. Identify through the poof process. P E W O F. What is the problem? Because I coach people all the time on my podcast through how they're being affected emotionally by what's going on and people are affected in many different ways maybe they identify their self-worth to their job and now they lost their job maybe a lot of uh, people feel powerless because they're stuck but this this is we got to think about identify the feeling problem emotion what's your worst fear very common one i'm not saying this is the case for everyone but a common one i think is what if i die if i get infected what if i die and that's a very common fear for 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 humanity and we mm -hmm. got to think if our worst fear came true how would it make us feel about who we are failure worthless or powerless and answer why you know for me death is about like you cease to exist that's a, that's why it's so common it's tied to worthlessness because you it's the worst f version of worthlessness you cease to exist okay so we have to, yeah, I mean, I've, I've heard a lot of people talk about this, you know, how they're being affected, but feeling is healing. Right. Totally get that. Now, Michael, um, how can people start writing their own story? So we've identified that they could be living in somebody else's story, and that's the cause of um, their negative emotions, their anger, uh, depression, their anxiety. How can people start to take control of their life and start writing their own story and start getting that new script up? Got it, got it. So F-I-S-T, S is separation, separate from what doesn't belong to you. I just want, I, you're, you're asking the most, one of the, the final and most important question, but to establish a foundation for that is S is separation, separating from what doesn't belong to you. This is about whose movie are you in? You want to identify that. Because once you identify your core feeling, you think, I think about what, and your parents feel the same way. And your parents, you got to think about their feelings were there before you were even born. What past family trauma planted the seed for all of that, either in their childhood or their parents. Just, this is, this takes a lot of uncovering. That's where, you know, you, either people set up a private session or read my book or go to my YouTube and podcast to really see examples. But after you do that, you got to tell yourself because who are more susceptible, who are, who is most susceptible of living in the movies of others, highly sensitive people and, and empaths because they have emotional antennas. This seems really silly. I, I have clients do this, <laughs> just put their index fingers right next to their head and just do that for a couple of seconds. And, I, and then I say, put it down. And I say, even if you put them down, they're always there because you were born with them. They allow you to feel what other people feel. But key question, key thing I tell them is I tell them to say this out loud and I think it'd be fun if you, you want to say it. Of course. Okay. I'm always game. Okay. So say this out loud. I'm not an emotional sponge. I am not an emotional sponge, but a source of light, but a source of light. Yes. So what does that mean? That means if we misuse our gift of emotional tennis and internalize other people's pain, feelings, and emotions as our own and into our personal space, I even tell people like, take an object uh, uh, with significant weight and put it on your lap and have them close their eyes. And I say, you know, if you misuse your gift and other people's feelings is in your personal space, that object and that weight, those emotions, those feelings become your emotional kryptonite that will break you down physically, emotionally, and mentally and make your life the living nightmare that it feels like 
right now because intergenerational trauma healing that's the that's what i do but the word trauma we normally think of sexual verbal physical abuse but trauma expands a enormous wide spectrum on top of that living in somebody else's movie as your own is painfully confusing and traumatic because no matter what you do in this movie nothing ever changes because it's not your movie your pain which is this is your hologram because no matter what you do to try to fix it your hands go right through it because it doesn't belong to you and that's why we use anxiety anger and depression because we need to cope we need that's why we're constantly thinking because we can't fix it there's nothing we can do we have to create a fear i'll give you a good example i was uh, coaching somebody else on the podcast his name is jigrit and he had a um, tremendous fear of driving he's only he's a college student and He's only driven twice in his life and it was in a parking lot. He's so scared that he's even scared to walk around driving cars, <laughs> moving cars. Wow. And so where is this all coming from? Digging, digging, digging. After two hour session at the end, we find out that his great grandparents, I mean, his par- his family is from India and Pakistan. At that time, India and Pakistan was under Britain rule. It was still one country. And this is what I'm learning from him. So when Britain left, they separated and Pakistan became Muslim state and all the Muslims from India migrated to Pakistan and all the non-Muslims migrated from Pakistan to India. But there's a lot of contention between these two groups plus a lot of, it's a a world of death, violence, murder, and hunger. So when he's in that, when Jigarit is in that car, he's in his great grandparents' movie and his grandparents' movie when they were five years old, living it as his own. It's like as if, he's going to die he's going to st- he, what, if people are in the car he freaks out even more because during that journey they had to protect their loved loved ones with you know with with in, in the face of death in the face of violence and murder and hunger so it, it gets even more intensified for him it doesn't make sense for him because mm-hmm. the thinking mind if you internalize what is not yours and it says okay i got your back let's create some kind of fear to make sense of it for me it's insomnia you know this, I got to create some type of fear to make sense. Oh, that's the problem. That's the problem. So that's why I want to, people don't, I don't, I don't want to miss, take, I don't want people to misunderstand this, but you know, what's happening in our world. Don't say that's the problem. What's causing all of my pain because the thinking mind is always looking for something, create something because when you internalize pain, that's not yours, it's looking for some type of fear. So it can make sense of it because it doesn't make sense when it's not yours. And to answer your question, what do you do after all of this? You have the key, the last part is T in the FIST process, which is true self. You got to identify your true self. That's a process I entail in my book and in my podcast, but it's, it's about creating and directing your own movie. That is so important because Mm -hmm. that is your base. That is your source of power. That is your reason for existence. But it's really important to not to infect it with your insecurities and feelings. Like the purpose, what is the purpose of your movie? You know, I heard people say, clients say like, I just want to be happy. I just want to end this pain. The purpose of your movie isn't to fix the unresolved feelings of your past family members. That's not your reason for existence. The purpose of your movie is a, it is a box office hit. It is for, it's for an audience to consume. It is to help and to Mm -hmm. transform others. For me during this time, I get triggered with finances and I say, I need to make money. I need to make money. But the purpose of my movie isn't to validate my fears, validate my instant, you know, like, uh, to validate myself it's to help and to transform others and then that creates the whole shift that's it's every, that's what life is about yeah I totally agree with that it's it's about adding that value to other people and and helping them get to that next stage um, you know I, I always remember there's always a quote that I think about when people talk about you know being in your own movie and it's it's don't be an extra in your own movie I mean, like you're the star, right? Like you're the hero. So make the most out of your life and really 
you know, take hold of that. Like if you go to the movie theater um, and you're watching a movie, you're not focused on everybody else. You're focused on the main character and you need to start focusing on yourself because you are the main character of your own movie. You're not an extra. Yeah. So I think that's really important. Um, now, Michael, if you could give one piece of advice to all the people who are watching this, what would that be? I think as a playoff on this is to direct your own movie because we're too busy directing other people's movies, feeling responsible for others, misusing our gift of emotional antennas and using our personal key to drive the vehicle of life for another. So it's, it's very important to direct your own movie, but it's your movie. It's your true self. Because when I ask people to identify their true self, they'll say those, and I, I'll tell them a hint. You're supposed to use two separate words because they work like a yin and yang. But I say, there's a hint to not define it as kind, compassionate, caring, or in relation to others. Because when you're alone in a room, you're going to feel like you're not good enough because you have to do mm -hmm. something for others to feel whole. But the beauty and the power of your true self is who you are just as you are. And so I asked people like, I asked somebody else I coached on the podcast. She said, I said, define your true self. She said, connected. I feel connected to everything. That's an immense burden to have because she's like, we are all one. But the me is the greatest gift to the we. You yourself, who you are, just as you are, your presence, your existence, your purpose is the greatest gift that you, you can never imagine for others. But when we identify ourselves constantly in relation to others, we're not tapping into our power. We're not tapping into the power of our movie. So I want people to begin directing their mo movie, visualizing what is it that you really want but think about, oh, I just want to have fun. But your movie is the purpose to help and to transform others. So really, really get the details and begin developing it. It's not going to happen overnight. Begin developing it and create that shift because that is the antidote, antidote to the pain that we have been living in, in the living in others' movies. Our sanctity, our peace, joy, and power comes from directing our own movie and spreading that movie, sharing that movie mm -hmm. with the world. Amazing. Now, Michael, where can people find you? They can find me on my website, heal, H-E-A-L, from the ground up com. They can find me on you know, podcasts on iTunes and YouTube, Heal from the Ground Up. I do private sessions uh, as well. And um, hopefully in about two, three months, I'll be released, released. I'll be done with this book, which is whose movie are you in? So definitely check that out. Amazing. Looking forward to it, Michael. Thank you so much for taking the time to be a part of this seminar. I think this presentation is going to help a lot of people um, really get down to the core of who they are and start living in their own movies. So I really appreciate you taking the time today. Thank you, Jacob.